Game 7 of the 2014 World Series was monumentous. That's a word, right? I'm pretty sure it's a word as I read off the script. The game on its own, everything that built up before it, and its immediate fallout are all super significant. October 29th, 2014 is a night that should go down in the history books. I'm hesitant to say it's a game that's super remembered right now. Game 7 in 2016 takes all the attention for World Series clinchers in that time period. But this game changed the course of how baseball history would be written, and let's get into how. From 1995 to 2012, every year, the Kansas City Royals went under 500. There was some happiness in that time with fun players like Mike Sweeney and Zach Greinke and... Hideo Nomo, oh, and Garth Brooks. But other than that, the Royals were about as irrelevant as a team could be. Sorry. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! However, through a pretty subtle rebuild in the late 2000s and early 2010s, the Royals beamed up to an 86-win team in 2013. Young talent was there, and ready to take the next step in 2014 which they did. They took home field advantage in the American League wildcard game. And in a game they had no right winning, down 7-3 in the bottom of the 8th inning, and down by a run in the bottom of the 12th, won the first Royals playoff game since the day after Marty McFly hit 88 miles an hour. Hey, what was the spin rate on that? How many Bauer units on the DeLorean? After a super impressive win, they had some more games to play. After knocking Mike Trout out of the playoffs for the one and only time in his career to this point, and a sweep of the Orioles right after that, the Royals were off to the World Series. This was their moment. They were going to the World Series with the momentum to win, playing maybe the best ball in the history of the team. They'd be matched up with a team that was pretty much their exact opposite. The San Francisco Giants had won the World Series in 2010 and 2012, and even though the general consensus was that their best days were behind them, the Giants were back in 2014. The Giants had name-brand established guys. Buster Posey was two years removed from an MVP. These two guys named Brandon were pretty good and had been there for a minute now, and they had three starting pitchers who had been ace quality in the last three to four years max. But what I remember most from that giant season are these signs people made about their right fielder Hunter Pence. Which, I have one of these, by the way. In my closet. I didn't make it. I didn't bring it to a game. But I have it. Why? I, I, I don't know. So yeah, this was a fun World Series between the old guard and the new up-and-comers. After the Royals won Game 6 10-0, we were in for a Game 7. Longtime vet Tim Hudson started for the Giants. Jeremy Guthrie started for the Royals. Did you know that Jeremy Guthrie had a vault for his shoes? In the top of the second inning, the Giants got to Guthrie for two runs. That lead lasted for maybe eight seconds, as Kansas City would come back and even things up in the bottom half of the inning against Hudson. Lefty reliever and former Royal Jeremy Affelt came in for the Giants. Two and a third valiant innings later, this game was now 3-2 thanks to a Mike Morse single. Then the Giants decided to do what probably seemed unthinkable. In the playoffs, teams will often use starting pitchers as relievers. This is to make sure your best guys can pitch to get meaningful outs. Because I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that you need wins in the playoffs. And in order to win games, you need to get outs. A lot of them. Three days earlier, Madison Bumgarner, the Giants' best pitcher, threw a complete game shutout in Game 5. His pitching performance single-handedly upped the Giants' probability of winning the series by 20.5%. To this point, Bumgarner was establishing a reputation as a great playoff pitcher. His first 13 postseason games included two complete games, 83 and a third innings, a 227 ERA, and a 203 opponent batting average, with low on-base, slugging, and batting average on balls in play numbers generated too, he was as stingy as they came in the postseason. Your other two fun facts on the guy they call Mad Bum are that he was secretly a rodeo champion named Mason Saunders, and one time, Madison Bumgarner dated a girl named Madison Bumgarner. But on just two days rest, it wasn't all that realistic to see him pitch in Game 7. He probably would have started if he was available, right? But then... A shadowy figure emerged from the bullpen before the bottom of the fifth inning. Madison Bumgarner was going to try to pitch the Giants into their third championship in four calendar years. The first batter he faced was Omar Infante, who singled. Don't get used to that. This would not be a regular thing against Bumgarner on that night. Madison Bumgarner would throw 68 pitches in this game seven. Only two of them resulted in a batter getting a hit. 
As the innings progressed, neither team could get anything going. This was gonna stay a one-run game till the very end. And you gotta love that. It sets up the drama and intensity a Game 7 should have. The Royals just could not get anything going against Mad Bum though. But their equally as stingy bullpen was giving them a chance. The Giants themselves only had three hits since Mad Bum entered this game. And it was gonna stay 3-2 headed to the bottom of the ninth. Leading off the inning is Eric Hosmer. He strikes out. Longtime Royals veteran Billy Butler comes up to the plate for what will go down as the final time in his long and successful Royals career. He pops out. One out to go for the Giants. When Madison Bumgarner entered this game, the Giants had a 54% chance to win the World Series. He's still standing on the mound in the bottom of the ninth, and they now have a 96% chance. That's incredible. He's also got 14 hitters in a row to make outs, four of whom struck out. But wait, I said there'd be two hits off Mad Bum. That's in the air to left center. That ball is down. And it gets passed to the wall. Gordon is going to dig for third. A mistake in the outfield. And he will hold there with two out. Did you see that? The Royals' third base coach held Alex Gordon at third base with one out to go in the World Series off a pitcher you were beyond blessed to even get a hit off of. That was your chance right there to save your season. At least take the shot. A game tying inside the park home run with two outs in the ninth inning of the World Series. That was what was ripped away from us by one man with the authority to make that decision. And that's something that should be honed in on here. That decision. There's no analytics that go into it. It's a spur of the moment decision, one guy standing in this little thing that's not a box, but they call it a box, so whatever, has to make. Fine. Play the game of the next batter could have driven him in on a single, or there could have been a wild pitch, all you want. An asteroid could have hit the stadium. There could have been a guy parachuting from the sky on the field of the World Series. The way Mad Bum was throwing, that was your chance. Right there. And it was held up. Hindsight is 2020. That's what they say, isn't it? But I would very much hope that I'd have the situational feel to realize that that moment right there was very, very likely your one and only chance. The odds of getting another hit feel way lower than a bad throw on a relay to the plate. You can't just assume that a relay is going to get him. Even if you're going to say, oh, he probably would have been out at the plate. You can't bank on that. I feel bad for that third base coach. I hope he was able to sleep at night because I truly do understand why he held him up. But man, for lack of a better way of saying it, that really sucks. Salvador Perez is now up for the Royals. He's a really good player who would go on to have some fantastic years ahead of him. Even in 2021, all the way after 2014, he led baseball in home runs and RBI. So he's a guy you'd love to have up in this spot. Only Mad Bum did Mad Bum things one more time. It's kind of a microcosm of baseball. Heartbreak, failure, lovable underdogs going on Cinderella runs, and almost, almost bringing home the trophy. I cannot believe the Royals held Gordon at third base. I get why it happened, but come on. You know what else I can't believe? That I didn't even watch this game. I was a sophomore in high school at the time. While I remember thinking it was really cool that the Royals of all teams were one win away from a championship, I somehow didn't watch this. I was probably just sitting in my room doing nothing at all important, wasting my time. I can't even come up with one thing that I could have been doing instead, and I hate that. I somehow wasn't alone though. More people watched Game 5 of the 2016 World Series than this Game 7. It seems this game doesn't get enough love to begin with. It was close and intense the entire way, had a thrilling ending, and historic performances. What's not to love? Why isn't it one of the Game 7s everyone throws out there as one of the greats? As you've probably figured out, Madison Bumgarner was the most valuable player of this series. He boosted the Giants' chances of winning the World Series by 64% all on his own. And I want to add a new stat to this video to make how good this performance was even crazier. When good relief pitchers enter games, they're typically in important situations. You basically throw these guys out in a pot of boiling water and say, hey, get outs for us. Leverage index measures the pressure of outs a pitcher is trying to get. A rating of 1 is average or neutral leverage. Above 1 is high pressure. 
Mad Bum averaged having to get an out with a leverage rating of 2.01 and he did it beautifully. That might even be an understatement. He might have had the greatest high leverage relief pitching performance of all time when you put all the factors together. There was one more reason to make a video centered around this game. Both teams went on to have happy endings. The Giants, obviously, won a World Series that night. Madison Baumgartner cemented his reputation as the greatest playoff pitcher ever. And after an encore in 2016, his lifetime playoff numbers looked like this. And the Royals had a fire lit under them as you'd expect. They came back in 2015 and, almost in a casual manner, went about their business in winning a World Series, cutting through everyone in their path. They made up for that loss in the single best way possible. And that win also probably contributed to people forgetting that they lost in Game 7 to some extent, compared to why this game isn't as remembered as it should be. Seriously, what an inspirational turnaround though. Finally having their moment in the sun before immediately fading back into their pre-2013 status. I did see that World Series winning game. From the stands, as a kid who grew up a Met fan, hey, what goes around comes around. I probably had it coming for missing one of the most important baseball games of the decade, and maybe even more. This game is on YouTube in its entirety. Go watch it.